I am working on a puzzle collab with Ashley from Paper and Twine. She has sent out puzzle pieces to a bunch of different artists. And once we complete them, she is going to reassemble the puzzle. So watch for that. I'll be sure to mention it when it is complete. This is a piece I had to work with, and this is how mine finalized. The first thing I want to do when working on this puzzle piece is take a look at the rules that Ashley has given. She wants us to stick with the color palette that is on the puzzle piece itself. And I have a pink, a green, and a blue to work with, and of course, the background white. There is also a little black in there, so I am covering my piece with gesso to kind of remove what is already there. And once I coat it with gesso, I'm going to dry in between layers. And it took about three, well, not about, it took three layers to completely coat this puzzle piece. So I'm putting on one layer of gesso drying and then finalizing with my third layer of gesso to, to get that completely covered. Now, I have to admit, I'm nervous to work on this, so I am going to work on a piece of rice paper, and I am just doing some asymmetric writing, and I'm actually writing how nervous I am to work on this puzzle piece. So it is just a lead, a pencil lead, and I'm utilizing that as my first layer on this piece of rice paper. I'm going to stick with my colors. So I have Twisted Citron here. I'm just rubbing that on. And we'll take some Robin's Egg Blue and add in next. So this is the Robin's Egg Blue. And I picked up that Stormy Sky, and I do want to use that. But I think I'm going to use that on a piece of tissue paper. So I'll pull in a piece of tissue paper and rip that down. And I have a script stamp that I'm going to put that stormy sky blue onto my script stamp and stamp that tissue paper with that color. And by adding the tissue paper, it'll give me a little bit of texture. <clears throat> I'll just <clears throat> excuse me, tear off the edges to make sure that we don't have any straight lines there. And I'll glue that into place with my mixture of glue and water. And I make my own Mod Podge. I'll link that here if you'd like to make yours as well. And now we're getting started with the background. So I've used two of the colors. I've used the blue and the green. Of course, the rice paper is white, but we'll probably have to add some additional white in there. But I do think I'll do some mark making with that stormy sky. I have the stormy sky on the tissue paper, but let's utilize the tools to get a little more of that stormy sky into the composition, but I need to know where I'm working. So I'm outlining my puzzle piece onto the piece of rice paper so I know where I'm going to cut and kind of where to put those marks. So with this clothes pen, I'm just dipping the end of it into my ink pad and using that as my mark making tool. And I like the tiny, fine little lines that the end of the clothespin makes. Let's just dabble these throughout the puzzle piece. 
And I also have an old tape roll that I think I'm going to pull out and add some circles. But first, let's put some of the pink into it with this tattered rose. And now I have my pink. So now I have the three colors that we saw at the beginning, the pink, the blue, and the green. Let's add a little white and back some of that down a bit with some gesso. And I'm just using my finger. Use a little, I'm just blending it out a little bit off to the side so that I'm not getting a big glob on. Let's get that stormy sky back out and ink up that tape dispenser that I pulled out. And we'll add our circles. So now the background's starting to look good. And I have another smaller lid that I'm going to utilize as well. So it gives us some larger circles and smaller circles on that background. Now I do have a circle die. And I cut this down to size to fit inside that die and took it over to my big shot. And that's the relief that you're seeing as I cut this out is it was run through the big shot with the circular die. Or the embossing folder, I guess is what, what I'm talking about instead of a die. So I ran it through the embossing folder now I'm cutting it down to size, and I will glue it onto my puzzle piece. So there we go. Now we have it into place. We can glue it down and start to decorate. There we go. Now that was a lot easier than working on that puzzle piece and freaking out about destroying the puzzle piece. So I think I'm going to do this. I am participating in a second puzzle with Ashley as well, and I think I'll do the same thing on that second piece. So I just want to cover the outside edges. I am using my gold metallic pen to do that. And while I have that out, I think I will just splatter a few drops of gold metallic across the entire puzzle piece. So we are getting close to having a background finished. I think that background's starting to look pretty good. I've definitely used my colors. I'm coating another piece of that rice paper with a twisted citron, and I am pulling out some of my thin lit dyes of little leaf floral type pieces, and I ran those through my big shot. So I'm poking out the dye and pulling that out now. And when I lay that down, I like the way it looks, but it's not really showing up incredibly well. So I'm going to take the same thin lit dies and go back with a piece of black cardstock and I will glue the black piece to the back of this just slightly offset to give it a little bit of a shadow. So when I place those on the puzzle piece, they'll be noticeable or you'll be able to ascertain that they are there and what they are. I also have a butterfly thin lit dye that I'm going to use. So I will use a couple of pieces of this floral and the butterfly as my decoration for the piece. 
And I think that's going to look good. And I think it will look much better when I get the black laid underneath it. So back off to the big shot I go. And I toyed with the idea of the bluebird, and I'm, I'm not liking that at all. So I'm going to use my own, my own little um, butterfly to decorate. So now we have everything in place. As you can see, I did back everything with the black. I pulled out a black uh, little conversational word I chose to remember. And I'll glue that into place. I'm picking up and making sure that it kind of tucks underneath the floral and underneath the butterfly. And just highlighting it with a little bit of liquid pearls. I'm going to dot those liquid pearls in various areas on the puzzle piece as well. And I always put these liquid pearls in dots of three or five or seven. I like to do them in uneven numbers. So now you can see them. I'm just going to lift this up and make sure that the center of my butterfly is glued down quite well with the glitter glue because I don't want him to fly off my piece and I want his wings to be able to be elevated. So that pretty much finishes up that puzzle piece. I'm pretty happy with it. What do you think? Do you think I did okay in the collab? the PT Jig Collab. Now I'm going to go around the outside edges. I had already put gold on them, but I'm just going to go back with this black Sharpie because I think the darker color will just give it a little bit more definition. So there it is, my finished piece. But I want to show you the back because I did the same thing on the back with the rice paper, but I just wrote what dyes uh, ink pads I used and the liquid pearls and just kind of put that information on there so Ashley would have it plus my name and my channel name which is Two Old Crows Mixed Media as you know. So here is the finished piece. I will link Ashley's channel in the description and you can follow along as she gets these pieces back in and see the final assembly of the puzzle. I'm anxious to see how that works. I think it was a great idea and I am curious to see how that puzzle is going to look put together with everybody's illustration of their piece. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate your comments and of course those thumbs up help me. And I've picked a playlist here that I think you might enjoy. So bye for now, and I will see you soon.